Hello everybody. I'm uh, Julien Karsik from Nuxeo. As a, I'm working there as a DevOps. Um, my initial title was uh, support and uh, industrialization. Uh, DevOps, you know, you know that term now. Uh, it's uh, it's pretty new, and uh, you will hear, it, hear about it uh, more and more. Um, about the the presentations we saw before, there was one, um, the one about. Um, Deploy it, which was very interesting and uh, maybe a good a good introduction for for mine, um, because the software they developed is covering uh, a good part of my job. Thank you guys. Um, hopefully there are other responsibilities as a DevOps. Uh, it's not only the making the bridge between um, the dev and the, and the operations. It's also being part of devs and operations and. Um, building and maintaining the tools used and required by Boost. I will talk to you about, the, about Jenkins, of course, why I chose Jenkins for Nuxeo, uh, how I use it over the, the year, how Jenkins solves my needs day by day, uh, why you should use it if it's not already the case, and uh, how you can start using it from a, a little start point and uh, increase uh, over the time, the, the use you have of uh, Jenkins. A few words about uh, Nuxeo, my company. It's uh, an, op an open source company, uh, maybe a little one, 50, 50 employees. Uh, we are working on uh, software, it's ECM software, Enterprise Content Management. Uh, our main goal is not uh, developing software, but uh, platform for softwares. Uh, I'll talk a little more about our, our business model and how, how we make money you, uh, based on services, but that's not the main uh, subject. Uh, quickly, here are a few overviews of the products we made, document and case management, digital assets management, websites, uh, public facing, rich internet applications, uh, tools, uh, RAD, RAD tools, and others. Uh, why do I bother you with um, all those applications? Uh, not only be because I'm proud of them, uh, it's because it gives you a good, um, a good view on the difficulty about uh, building and uh, maintaining a continuous integration and a quality assurance over so much uh, applications. Nuxeo, as I said, is not a, a software. We, we build some uh, ready to use applications, document management, case management, but our, our main focus is on building and maintaining a uh, whole, a lot of, um, a set of frameworks. Frameworks from uh, low level to high level. Low level is uh, services about enterprise content management, uh, uh, manipulating uh, content, working with content on the, on the core level. And uh, on the high level, we have uh, frameworks for every uh, available technologies and APIs. We are, uh, you are able to work with Nuxeo using uh, Java, of course, uh, all the, the Java APIs, web services, but also Flex or any, any other language. So the, the main challenge is how to, how, to, how to check that, how to maintain that, that uh, framework set how to give confidence to, to our users and customers about so much, uh, uh, so much framework. Um, about, about the source code, it's really a huge framework. Uh, I don't like the lines of code uh, notion, it doesn't mean anything, but it's really, Nuxeo is big. Nuxeo is big, it's more than one million lines of code. It's, uh, it's a lot of Maven modules and, uh, and add-ons, and um, that's the point where we encountered difficulties using uh, Jenkins or any other tool. It's uh, how, to, how to check the coherence between all those modules, all those parts of codes. And uh, as you saw, there was a lot of applications built upon the framework. Uh, what, what do we must test? Will we test the framework with unit tests? Will we test the applications with a functional test? 
how to, how to cover the needs of our customers who built their own applications on the, over the framework. Uh, it's really a complex challenge. And uh, even if Nuxeo is made in Java, we are using a lot of other languages, um, small languages uh, such as XML, JavaScript, X HTML, uh, CSS. Everything must be tested and covered. And uh, as I said, uh, we are compliant with other languages. So uh, how to test all those things? Um, there, was also, there, was also, there is also the, um, the question of the development model, just as we saw before with the, the presentation just before. There was a very interesting point about the development branch branches and uh, how to organize that. And uh, there is the volume, and there is the, the organization, a lot of things to, to take in a, into account. There is also, also the, the human constraints. Everyone wants to, to work as he's, he's used to. Everyone wants uh, something easy to use. And uh, I especially want, uh, I, I don't want to do twice the same thing. That's something I learned uh, a long time before, and maybe a good uh, one of the reasons why I like uh, Jenkins. Every time I have to do something twice, uh, I think about Jenkins for doing it the, the next time. Uh, the developers want me to save their time. The testers want to be able to test the developer, what the developers are working on. And uh, the integrators, meaning uh, or customers or other people, because since we are open source, we don't know everyone using a uh, Nuxio platform. Uh, they also want to be confident about the platform and uh, to have guarantees about the, the quality, the source code, the stability, the APIs, and uh, all those things. And in DevOps, you have uh, also operations. The, there are deployment constraints. We have to test uh, the, the packaging uh, as a war, G, G, or things like this. We, we have to test all the, all the operating systems, the databases, um, other, other details uh, more linked to Nuxeo, since Nuxeo is uh, storing documents, uh, content. We, it's using Blob Store, and uh, like Jenkins, it's based on a plugin system, meaning you can uh, change the Blob Store. And so if you are using a file system or a NAS or Astra, S3, Amazon or other, uh, how do you guarantee that this, is, this will work uh, the, same, the, the same manner it was, it's working with a file system? There are performance uh, constraints. And uh, for the last, uh, the last part of the deployment question, there is the, the administrators. Uh, the guys who want uh, simple, uh, simple procedures, they want to be able to back up, restore, upgrade simply. And uh, we also want to give them some guarantees with that, about that, uh, also using uh, Jenkins or continuous integration at this, at this time. Um, rather than uh, showing you how is working uh, the Jenkins at Nuxeo now, uh, I thought it will be more interesting to show you how we started using Jenkins and evolved uh, over the time. Maybe it will be encouraging you to use Jenkins uh, because it's, not, it's less frightening and uh, you will see it's easy to start uh, with uh, small parts, uh, small covering and uh, increase, increase, increase. And at the end you will see that uh, a lot of subjects we saw today uh, our subjects were concerned of. Um, at the beginning, there was a, a switch for Nuxeo from uh, Python to Java. And uh, so we had to think about something else than BuildBot. We were using BuildBot for very small, uh, small aspects. It was only about building and t running uh, unit tests, uh, not as much as we do today. Uh, switching to Java, we, we tried a lot of tools. Uh, I personally know uh, Continuum and Cruise Control. 
Uh, other people talk about uh, Team City, who is providing free, li free licenses for open source uh, editors. And we tested uh, a lot. We also, a few months later, tested the uh, Sonar uh, that we know, but it was the beginning of the tool. And uh, we fall back on uh, Hudson. Why Hudson? Uh, maybe the main reason is uh, we are sharing a lot of uh, values with Hudson. The manner it, it's developed, uh, the way it's developed, the, the, the idea of using plugins, uh, the, the extensibility. Uh, we, uh, we developed in uh, Nuxeo a lot of notions that came at the same time or, be, or later, such as uh, OSGI and things like this, meaning um, extension points, uh, components, uh, how to build a, a product using small bricks. Um, so, Hudson was a, a good candidate. Uh, I wanted to do uh, quality assurance on it, but that was not the primary, primary goal. I wanted to do code, code analysis on a lower level, meaning uh, check styles and rules like this. Uh, hopefully at Nuxeo, uh, the developers are already aware of, uh, of those subjects and it was important for, for them to guarantee that the, the code will be easily, easily merged and uh, things like this. The, 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 the first step in quality assurance was about the code formatting and things like this. Uh, I wanted to build uh, Nuxeo against uh, various operating system, of course. Uh, that's, that's obvious, but uh, I don't want to make our developers work on Windows or operating systems like this. But I want to provide the guarantee to anyone who will that it will work the same manner. The same manner. Um, and uh, we had the Selenium suite. That, so we wanted to, to run a Selenium suite for functional tests. Uh, as I said before, I wanted to automate everything else since it's easy with uh, Jenkins to, to automate things, to, to set up uh, scripts and uh, things like this. Why not using it? I wanted to automate the documentation generation. Uh, today it's really far from the beginning. I see, we'll see later. And uh, another point, important point, was to involve the developers. Involving the developers means uh, it's not enough to have continuous integration. You need the, the teams to be aware of the continuous integration. You need them to follow what happens. You need them to believe in the continuous integration, to rely on it. You want that they, they won't use it, they are happy to use it, and they, they are not bothered by the, integ the continuous integration. Uh, uh, a simple example is uh, Jabber. We're using the Jabber plugin from, uh, from Jenkins. And uh, if it spams developers every time because you broke something, you break something, you break something, and that's not true because it, it, it's not set to, def to detect properly uh, who breaks something, um, the developer is, uh, <laughs> will... Uh, <laughs> We'll blacklist uh, Jenkins as a, as a Jabber ID, and uh, that's okay. Same, uh, same thing for the, the emails, and uh, every, every way you can, uh, you can uh, send information to the, to the developers. So there, there is a, a risk and a, a benefit and a, a real uh, important part about the communication between the system and the humans. Uh, the here is the first architecture I, I set up. Today it's something else and tomorrow it, it will change again. Uh, the first idea was to have uh, separate chains between uh, the all our public source code, the private source code, which is a uh, code we, we write for our customers or things like this, and uh, the public source code that is available for, uh, for the the external for the, the, the customers. Uh, I'll be more precise. Uh, we are developing a framework. We are working on it and uh, adding some uh, features, uh, something in, in the source code. When there are outside, there are people working on the platform, using the platform to build software. And uh, they, most of the time, they will use the, the release version of the code. So it's okay, it's fine, 
we are able to publish a release version uh, and it, uh, it's not difficult. But sometimes, and maybe often, they, they want to work on the snapshot, so they want the development trunk. But they want the development trunk which is stable. <laughs> there is a little paradox, but in, internally and externally, uh, the development uh, branch is not, is not the same thing. So I had to define an internal uh, process about uh, the development branch and uh, working on snapshots and uh, day by day building. And when it passes a lot of tests, it's published outside. And that at, the, at that time, on the, you see maven.nuxo.org, which is a Nexus, a publicly available Nexus, the artifacts, the snapshot artifacts, becomes available for the, the, the external people working on Nuxo. So they can, they can use the development branch, but a stable version of the development branch. Setting up this uh, was not really uh, hard because Jenkins is, uh, is uh, relatively easy to adapt to, uh, to scale with the needs. Uh, when you need more slaves, you add a slave, you add a slave, you add a slave. It, re it requires you to set up rules, we'll see, we'll see it later, but if everything is, is okay in the way the developers work and the way you set up slaves, it's easy to scale Jenkins uh, on your needs. Um, the first goal was to build up the, speed up the build time because uh, it's, 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 it's long to build Nuxeo on a, on a developer computer. It, it takes a lot of time, um, partly because of Maven. Maven system is powerful, but uh, it uses a lot, a lot of bina binaries and uh, building Nuxeo can take uh, about uh, more than two hours at the moment. Today it's uh, 20, about 20 minutes, 40 maximum. Um, there, are, uh, there are also the constraints of the release. When I, I, when I did the first release for Nuxeo, uh, Nuxeo 5.0, uh, it took me the, ho the whole night because of the breakage, the things I had to repair and everything. And if I put out everything that was wrong and uh, only take in a, into account the, the successful build time, it took me about uh, eight, nine hours. Uh, I started uh, about uh, six o'clock, seven o'clock when development stopped and uh, I left <laughs> at the morning. So that was uh, one of my goals to make it, to, to do it made by uh, Jenkins. I already explained the, the, the challenge of internal and external build chains. Um, I had to work with the developers about some uh, simple rules, uh, but which are, which are re highly required for, for working on uh, continuous integration. The, the build must be self-testing. That means that uh, if, I, if I take your code, uh, I must be able to test it. I don't have to, to look at the, the code details. Uh, I don't have to even to look at the readme. I just want to run a script, ant, maven, shell, anyway, but I run it and it builds, it tests, it deploys. It's a requirement. Uh, the same way, uh, developers must never uh, put into the code or the script or anything, something uh, linked to, the, to, to their environment. We talked about it in previous presentations. Uh, there is the, the problematic for the, the, the developers and for the production. I don't want anyone to put something into the source or the, the, script, the, build, the build scripts uh, about the environment. That's the job of uh, the continuous integration. That's the job of your computer when you, when you are developing. Uh, you must build, the, you must make your, your source code agnostic about where it runs. And you must be aware about uh, the CI uh, you must uh, follow it, you must, be, you must know what happened on the continuous integration. Uh, time by time, uh, from Nuxeo 5.1 to 5.3, meaning from uh, 2007 to 2010, 
uh, we used Jenkins and we, we used it more and more and more. I talked about the release process and since uh, this was working very well, uh, from the beginning people came to me as a DevOps, developers, producers, uh, marketing, uh, everyone come, came to me and asked more things. They, they asked me to be able to release at any, at any time. They asked me to be able to release uh, from the code from yesterday. Uh, they wanted a promotion, the build promotion, meaning uh, you, yesterday I, I did a release and uh, the code continues. Today there are testers, human testers working on that release because it was already validated by the, by the system. Uh, maybe there are uh, other people working on the, on the product, testing it, you, looking at the UIs and everything. And in three days, four days, five days, someone came, comes and, uh, and asks for a release. But he, don't wants, uh, he doesn't want a release from the, the code at the moment he comes to me because that code is not tested. He wants to release what was prepared a few days before. So I, I wanted Jenkins to manage that also. Uh, today we saw, uh, we, see, we can see we build promotion uh, plugin, and a lot of other plugins in, into Jenkins managing that. Uh, at that moment, that was not uh, existing. Uh, but I found a way to, to set that uh, with uh, Jenkins. There was uh, more and more tests, of course, since the code grows, uh, since we detect some bugs, every time uh, we have good developers. <laughs> so every time they detect a bug, they first write a new test covering that bug. Then they fix the, the bug. That means that uh, every, even uh, without uh, increasing the code size, we are continuously increasing the testing code size. So uh, it's, um, there are more and more tests over uh, Jenkins. There are also more and more performance tests and functional tests, since we are building applications also with uh, the platform, uh, those applications need to be needed to be tested. And um, at that time, we defined, we, we set up a, a, an, another framework inside the Nuxo platform, a testing framework, uh, which allows to run functional tests, I would say integration tests, uh, from the unit tests. That means that uh, when you are working on something, uh, when you are coding a feature, uh, unit test is testing the feature at a basic uh, level. The Nuxio runtime uh, framework gives you more, po more power on that. It gives you the ability to start an embedded framework, uh, to start uh, to build up uh, a little engine and uh, to run integration test against it, against it. It's not really functional test because you don't have the UI, uh, you don't have the whole platform, you don't have the, 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 the packaging which is used at the end, but you have more than a little feature. You have more, uh, multiple features working together and you can, uh, you can practice uh, integration test at a unit test level. Uh, that means that that increase a lot, the, the size code, the, size, the, the, the number of tests, but uh, especially the time to test, because starting the framework, running integration test, meaning that a module which was unit test in a few seconds may take about uh, four, five, ten minutes for a test. Imagine, come back to the Nuxio source code, we have uh, 500 components. Uh, we have uh, more than 60 add-ons, 500 Maven modules. Imagine, imagine every module taking uh, about uh, 10 minutes for, for a test. And that's not enough. Uh, since that was working, uh, we asked me, okay, but we are testing that with uh, Derby, uh, which is an embedded database that is not the database which will be used by uh, the production. So we want the unit test to be run against all the database we use. And that's not enough. We also want to run those tests with all the operating system we use. 
and and so on and so on. Imag you, you can you can view the, the matrix builds resulting from that. Uh, take about take the 2,500 uh, unit tests we have, uh, multiply by uh, 10 minutes, and by uh, three or less. So uh, may, maybe four in, re in, re in fact, because uh, you know that uh, testing Windows XP is not the same as t t testing Windows Vista. So let's say five OS. Um, testing uh, all the database, uh, all those cases. And that becomes a really uh, complex challenge for the continuation integration system for Jenkins. Um, over that, there was uh, other things. There was, we, are, we are using uh, Nuxo. We, are practice, we, we do practice dog fooding. That's a good thing, maybe you know. But dog fooding is not testing. In fact, uh, I consider dog fooding as the, the result at the end of the, the CI system. Uh, dog f we practice dog fooding uh, in, multi in multiple ways. We do it uh, for our intranet which is based on the Nuxo platform. We do it, uh, so uh, here is the Nuxo intranet. We do it with the documentation. We built uh, an application with the Nuxo platform, which is introspecting Nuxo platform itself for extracting extension points, contributions, components, and uh, generating documentation for that. Uh, we are using Nuxo platform for the services. Nuxo Studio is built upon Nuxo platform and provides uh, online services for rapid development. Uh, we are using Nuxeo for managing our customers' uh, contracts and providing them uh, front-end and back-end uh, back uh, application. So we do the fooding, but it's not enough, and it's not uh, testing. Uh, so I had to add uh, also uh, testing over all those tools all those uh, administration, uh, uh, documentation tools that was growing, growing, growing. Uh, about, we are talking about uh, three years, uh, four years uh, spec. Uh, came other subjects like uh, the, behind the packaging of the application, uh, the application, there is the packaging for the, the end system, the end OS, uh, we, the, the installers. We, we started to build uh, installers for Debian, uh, VM, uh, for Windows, for multi-operating systems, and those is installers need to be tested too. And they need to be tested too during the development phase. Uh, all those subjects, we, we want them to be tested continuously. We don't want to test the code, the development code, then release, and at this time, starting to test uh, packaging, installer, etc. It's too late. And uh, we started also to work on uh, plugins for Firefox, for Android, for all, all this uh, stuff. And the last point, which is maybe the worst, uh, we had to maintain versions. Meaning, uh, when we released uh, Nuxo 5.3, uh, we had to maintain it for two years. So we, I, needed to, I had to duplicate uh, year by year. We, we, do, we do release about uh, every three to six months, meaning that every three to six months, I had to duplicate continuous integration because <laughs> we, we, we release a version Everything is, is fine for about uh, CI on the development, but I had to put CI on the, the maintained version. Multiply, multiply, multiply. We don't want to use uh, hundreds of uh, slaves and things like this. So there was uh, growing CI issues uh, at the end of, the, of that, uh, that evolution about the last year. Uh, and just be, until, uh, until a few months before, uh, we had to solve uh, big, big issues with uh, Jenkins. Not Jenkins issues, but issues we have with the usage you have of Jenkins, we see, we, which is a, a big usage, I, I guess. Uh, we had CPU issues, network disk usage. 
oh, network, okay, it's fine, we, we set up the fiber, but <laughs> it's not, <laughs> it's not the, the magic solution. Uh, we had uh, issues with the build cycle duration. Uh, for example, a developer commits its code, and until the end of the testing cycle, uh, it will take the whole day. So something is, is committing, some, a developer is com committing something, he will see the next day if it was good or, or, no, or not, and during that lapse of time, uh, other developers commit, committed to. So when the results uh, comes from the, the CI, it's too late because uh, Jenkins can't, be, can't, can't do the sort between uh, all the commits and tell who is the developer who breaks something. It's too late. Uh, he has uh, commits with uh, 10 developers. And uh, so at this moment, he will spam 10 developers, telling them uh, some one of, of you broke something. And uh, we arrive to the situation I talked about at the beginning of this presentation. It's when uh, we lose the developer's uh, confidence into the CI, and they, they, they don't want to hear anymore about it because uh, every day they are warned. Maybe you have broken something. Maybe you have broken something. And most of the time, that's not true. So uh, that's, that's a big, big issue. Uh, another issue is uh, when, uh, about that is when, the, when the, the information comes that something is broken, it's also too late because the developer has changed of subject. He developed a feature and he went on another feature. And when he, when he, when he got the information about the broken feature, it's, he, he, it already, he already started to work on something else. So uh, we asked him to stop a new work, go back on, a pre on the previous one, uh, reset maybe his, env his environment, uh, reopen everything in Eclipse. We know Eclipse is not very fast for opening big subjects. Um, I can, maybe I, I show you at the end of, of the presentation my, my Eclipse view. Uh, it's really huge. Uh, so it's making, it's making, uh, it's a, a time lost for the company. It's time lost for the company. It's uh, boring for the developers. It's, uh, it's complicating discussions because the testers uh, are talking about uh, some features to the developers, but the developers already changed subjects in their mind. Uh, it's, uh, it's really uh, slowing the development process. And uh, we have uh, issues with uh, accuracy and things like this. Um, maybe it's linked to, it's due to the use of uh, Maven, but um, we have to make the jobs depend uh, between, between them because uh, when we build Nuxeo Core, we need Nuxeo service, Nuxeo platform, Nuxeo features to use the, what was built by Nuxeo Core at, at the moment. And if we don't make the job wait for the other job, uh, when, the, when the Nuxeo platform will be built, maybe there will, be, there will have been another build of the Nuxeo, another build of the Nuxeo Core, and so there is no currents between what is, t is tested, and uh, you will get uh, issues, uh, test issues, we, you will get uh, broken features which, which are not broken. So we had to put constraints between jobs, but the drawback is uh, whole, the full cycle takes uh, at least eight hours when no one is committing, and if a lot of people is committing, committing, committing every, all the day, uh, you can take, you can wait for the, the whole cycle at the end of the week. That's not acceptable. So, how did we work on those issues? Uh, we studied the build cycles in order to identify what is built from the commit moment to the result moment. What result do we want? At what feedback can we can we give? Uh, we can give a feedback at the unit test. We can give a, a feedback at the runtime test, which is unit test, but more evolved. We can, we can give a feedback at the functional test on the application and uh, the installer. And uh, there are a lot of moments feedback could be useful and we want to stop or not the cycle at those moments. And that way we identified uh, four 
three, four, five ways of uh, building and testing the platform and the dependent applications. Uh, I will show you the, the detail of uh, this graph. Here is uh, the main result, which was, um, which was useful for us. It means uh, here we have a commit. It started uh, at uh, 21 hour, 21 because uh, everyone uh, stopped developing about uh, 1780. It took one hour for the commit to be taken in account, into account. Uh, it kept uh, three hours to run uh, before stopping. And the whole cycle, not only for this commit, the whole cycle for testing everything that depends uh, directly or indirectly on that, on that commit took uh, almost nine hours. That's, that's awful. <laughs> Uh, maybe you recognize uh, the, the tool. It's not yours uh, because we started working on it at the same time. Uh, I saw it later and you use the, the same technology, GraphViz. Uh, so we use GraphViz too, but not uh, using the dependency graph. I'm sorry. Uh, we use the uh, homemade one uh, in Python, uh, quickly script, but uh, uh, I hope we will be able to merge it with, what we, with your work because uh, it's interesting too. Here is a, a detail. I don't know if, uh, uh, up. Here, okay. The idea is you have a commit. We study what job is run by that commit, how much time it took, and at what, at what moment you, you see that uh, all this is um, all these uh, blocks are uh, jobs and correspond to a uh, set of modules and uh, at the end a repository we have a lot of repositories for nuxeo and uh, nuxeo nuxeo common is a, is a really simple one nuxeo runtime is a repository with uh, maybe 20 modules and uh, at the end, it becomes uh, really big. Uh, at the Nuxo runtime moment, you see that a lot of jobs are triggered because uh, almost the whole platform is depending on the Nuxo runtime. So the Nuxo core, which is the next one, and uh, the Nuxo services, and uh, Nuxo sim, etc. And we had to organize all this. So Nuxio services wait for Nuxio core being built before it's, uh, it's turn to, to, to build. And in that uh, graph, you can see that there is an issue in the, the way we were using uh, Jenkins. There was a commit here starting the cycle. And at the same moment, there was a user starting two other builds. And they are encountering themselves, they are um, uh, conflicting, and at the end, it increased the build time, it could introduce uh, incoherence. Uh, in the colors, you can see that everything is fine here, here is something is unstable, and at the end, we have something broken, really, really far from the commit. Uh, here, it took uh, more than two hours to get that result. And that's not the only, the, the only point. It's an add-on. It, it's important, but there are other aspects. So we don't want to stop the cycle at, the, at this point. We want also to test other dependencies, and we go to other add-ons. Here, we go to a, a final application, which, which is a social collaboration application, uh, which was broken by this commit on Tomcat on Windows only that is not detectable for developer. The develop we can't ask the developer to test all the servers or the operating systems. So this is something important, but we need that result at a different uh, delay than the, the, the build broken or the unit test broken. There are different acceptable durations. That's a sample. Uh, the other one after our work is, uh, is, more interest, is more interesting uh, because this one is fine. Here we have, uh, ah, sorry. Yeah, you have hours of 
what are the colors? Ah, in the arrows. Uh, that is bet between uh, the kind of uh, triggers. There are, um, there are programmatic triggers. The ones we set in, into Jenkins are when, thing, uh, when telling uh, Jenkins uh, that jobs require these jobs. And uh, there are Maven dependencies. And uh, Maven dependencies are interesting. I already heard someone telling that, uh, saying that uh, he does not recommend to use uh, Maven dependencies with Jenkins. I would, I would say the inverse. I, I fully not agree with that because that is not manageable for a human. Uh, and uh, so why not using the, the machine? Uh, all those uh, yellow arrows are useful for the build. Uh, so here is the answer. In that, in that graph, you see that uh, first thing is it's, it's look, it, look like, it looks like uh, better organized than the, the previous one. It still take ta takes time, okay? We did not work on the cycle itself, only on the triggers and uh, things like this. And uh, you see that at the end, the timing is better. We, have res we start to have results after uh, about uh, 20 minutes, uh, 30 minutes. It's really better than two, three hours. And uh, for the last ones, you see, uh, test against uh, various servers and uh, and uh, operating system. Okay, that was the parenthesis. <laughs> Doing that job, we identified our leaks. Sorry, you have a question? No. Uh, we identified our leaks into the, the the application. We identified what what could be improved. And uh, but we did not know how. That was the big challenge. Uh, we worked on the source code. That was the easy part. We know the source code, it's ours. So we worked on uh, GWT uh, optimizations, which is awful. Uh, I don't know if you use uh, Google uh, framework, but building that takes uh, eight hours and builds uh, everything for all the existing uh, navigators for every possibilities in all languages. <laughs> so we reduced the, that scope, at least for the test. Uh, we worked on the testing suits. Uh, we progressively replaced, starting replacing uh, Selenium with WebDriver for multiple reasons. First reason is uh, it's, it's easier to maintain for a developer. Uh, it's more near to the developer. The, the, the historical reason was the Selenium tests were written by our testers. Uh, now we are making the test being written by our developers. Uh, WebDriver is a little faster. Selenium merged into WebDriver, so that's a good reason. And uh, we could mix WebDriver with Nuxo runtime and so uh, get uh, good integration tests at the unit level, which is giving uh, quick feedback. Uh, and we worked on the CI. We improved the slaves' usage. We saw that uh, some slaves were not used and some other were always used. We, had, uh, we saw that some slaves were not dimension, proper, properly dimensioned. They were missing memory or CPU. Uh, we saw that uh, there were network, network issue, issues because we had uh, local versus uh, remote things. Some, uh, some Nexus are internal to Nuxo, some others are mirrored and uh, external. So we had to organize the slaves I will talk again uh, at the end about that, but we are progressively uh, moving our CI to the, to the cloud. And that's a, that's a good challenge too. We have to, to think about that. Uh, a build can, can move from uh, uh, one minute to uh, 20 minutes, depending on the, where it is uh, located because of network issues. And uh, there was a big job with priorities. Priorities, uh, we use the priority plugin, uh, which is really uh, great. That allows you to identify which are, what are the builds, the jobs, which, which are the fastest. And so instead of paralleling them, when, when uh, you have A, B, C, which can be run at the same time, 
taking uh, into account the dependencies and everything, it's okay, it's fine to run A, B, C at the same time. If B takes only a few seconds to run, why allowing uh, A or C to run before it? That makes no sense. So we use the priorities to put in front uh, the, the jobs which were the faster one. Uh, that improved greatly the, the feedback delay for the developers. And uh, if the jobs we takes, uh, if a job that takes uh, 10 minutes must wait one minute be before being run, it's okay. It won't change uh, anything. And we worked on the cycles, I show you. Uh, we worked on the jobs, uh, telling uh, the, the idea was we are checking too much things into a, a, a one job. So why not uh, decoupling the, the, the problematic? Why not creating multiple jobs and uh, allowing better parallelization? parallelization. And uh, talked about CPU, CPU memory. Uh, we worked on the Nexus infrastructure because uh, Maven build time uh, is, a, is an important thing in, in, into Nuxio. Uh, I tested uh, an interesting ID I found into Jenkins plugins, which is uh, making Jenkins be, being a, a Maven repository itself. I like the ID. Uh, I find it uh, for testing, it's, it's so obvious. So uh, I, I couldn't get something really good with it for now, but I find the, the ID really interesting. Uh, rather than uh, maintaining three Nexus, I would have one Nexus uh, repository uh, manager. I would have one for the true artifact. And I would, I would uh, prefer use uh, Jenkins itself for delivering art artifacts for Jenkins. Uh, it's quicker. Uh, and we fixed uh, uh, issues be between uh, the jobs and the triggering ways. I, sh I, I show you that uh, on, the, on the graph. Uh, here is the current view of Nuxio. Uh, that's only one view. Uh, in order to improve the, the developers' in involvement and the way they are, they are using the, the, the CI, I set up for them uh, multiple views. Views per team, views per versions, views per priority. I set up a critical view and a dashboard view. And uh, I, I set up them uh, first when you come at the morning look at the critical view fix everything in it then uh, when it's fine you can look at the dashboard view the, uh, then after you can start your day work and uh, for that we had to use the claim plugin for example because uh, having two two people two or more people looking at the same time why something is broken how can i fix it uh, that's, uh, that's time lost. So uh, claim allows us to, to claim a job. I, I go, on a, I go on, a f on a broken build. I say I, I claim that one and I will work on it. You don't have to, you don't have to, to worry about it. I'm working on the, on, the, on the subject. And if I can't fix it, that's, that's not a, an issue. I will have looked at the, the, the console, the reason why it's failing. I, would, uh, I will have set on the description uh, the, the failure reason, and uh, I will have filled an, an issue in, uh, in Jira, in our, in our case, in the, um, in the issue management, and uh, it's fine for someone else working on it if required, but uh, we have uh, properly managed the time uh, we, we, we set uh, to fix the bills. Uh, it's, it's normal to have something broken. Uh, I, I talked about, you, about the, the, the size of the Nuxio source code. So it's okay, it's fine to have a, 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 a tens uh, broken, uh, broken builds. Uh, here it's not uh, tens. Uh, yellow is uh, unstable, that means that there are warning uh, in the logs or things like this. What is not fine is a broken build that's broken for a long time. Long time is more than one day. It's not okay. So breaking something is okay. That's the, that's the goal of the of the CI to, to tell you. Uh, not not fixing it quickly. It's not okay. Uh, 
Now, after work, we come to four kinds of CI cycle. Uh, less than 10 minutes for a feedback, up to three hours instead of, of eight. About uh, 450, now it's, it, it, it may be uh, 500 jobs on, uh, with only f two, 25 uh, servers, which is not so much when, we lo when you look at the code and, uh, and the number of jobs. It's uh, up to the weekend, maybe 200 builds to uh, during a, a big day, a big uh, work day, working day, it can go to uh, two, three, six thousand builds per day. That's huge. And uh, we are testing uh, six database engines uh, over five different operating systems. Uh, that means uh, 30, 30 problematics over seven uh, applications, 30 by seven, and, uh, and so on. We have, uh, total, if, we, if you totalize everything, we have about 500 to 100,000 tests run on all products and versions, including under CI. Everything, with, all that with only 25 servers. Uh, that's why I, I said that uh, Jenkins was really good at scaling our needs. Uh, here are the, the cycles we set uh, into Jenkins. The first one is maybe the more common one. You have a commit, it triggers a build, check out the source, build, unit test, packaging, <laughs> I'm finishing, <laughs> packaging, testing performance, functional, and uh, other add-ons. The second one is a daily trigger, uh, day by day, we check out everything, we build everything, and we test everything. Everything, that means uh, all the Java JDK, all the, the operating system, all the databases. That takes a whole, a big, big, big time, but it's okay, it's, uh, it's apart from the development uh, process. So, every, at the end of every day, we have uh, big results, on the whole platform and application built on them. Uh, every three hours, I set up permanent uh, cycle, which is uh, I build, I, f I, I, I package, I test, and I do it every, t every three hours, anyway, uh, don't taking a, a account, into account uh, the commits or everything. It, it's, a, it's a continuous cycle. And uh, at the end of, the, of the, that cycle, I merge, when everything is fine, I merge a stable branch, meaning that uh, when uh, we want to compare something broken to the stable status, we have a, a, re a good reference. And uh, the last one, the big one, is the nightly build, uh, which is a nightly or manual process. We use, uh, we use it for making the release. Uh, it's a full build, packaging everything, testing everything, uh, building in test installers, testing them, uh, merging, uh, if everything is okay, merging the branch for the public, uh, running performance tests, uh, and uh, if we want, but not at, not every time, perform the release. That was I, I told I t uh, I, um, I was when I was talking about uh, build promotion. Uh, that's it. That means uh, performing a release and pushing the tags and artifacts uh, multiple days after the, the code was uh, released. Uh, and at the end, uh, here is a list of the main plugin, gen, main Jenkins plugins we used. Uh, you can, I, I let you see it later. I have to finish. Uh, the, what, what is the future for Nuxeo? We want to improve quality using Sonar. We want to improve integration with uh, Jira. For now, the test I did was not uh, satisfying. We want automated merge. Uh, I already started that, uh, that work. It's, uh, it means uh, when a developer works on uh, something complex, on multiple repositories, uh, he wants to push, uh, to ask the CI to build, uh, to, to retrieve that code uh, from the NXP feature, something, or master if the, if the branch does not exist, and uh, pull that, all that, bring it together, build, test, and if it's fine, at the end, merge. 
So instead of uh, pushing on Friday uh, evening uh, everything and uh, say, uh, I see that weekend if it's okay, uh, they push on a specific branch and uh, the Jenkins is taking care about that. And if it's fine, on Monday, the branch will have been merged. And if it's not, it won't have been merged and it won't have broken the, the work for the others. That's a very important subject for us. And the other subjects are, uh, we are moving uh, on the cloud, we are working on uh, automated uh, deployments uh, using uh, Sheaf or Puppet or things like this. I, I looked at the work already done by others. And uh, we, we discussed already with CloudBees. Uh, we, we are looking at, uh, at that because we are, we are recommending Jenkins to our customers and we want to provide our customers uh, one button uh, whole system with uh, build, test, integration, CI, uh, development, all the tools in one. Uh, in one. And uh, the last point is uh, uh, we need some, in, uh, some, uh, some work on uh, some part of Jenkins. We need some work on uh, maybe abstraction because when there is something, when, when you need two plugins to work together, you have to, to work on the code of a plugin to make it know the other. And maybe more assumption we would allow to, to do like we do in, in Nuxeo. But that means that uh, uh, a plugin improves something and that's automatically taken, taken in, into account by the others without uh, having to work on the, the boost plugins. Uh, we need to work on multiple uh, SCM and Git because we have uh, tens of uh, repositories and there is no solution currently to, m to keep the currents between the branches. Uh, change log, matrix jobs. Matrix jobs I is a big issue. It's really useful, but it's not working well. It's not uh, as powerful as uh, the other kind of jobs, but we need them. Uh, dependency graph we talked about, uh, node label, parameters, a lot of things. Jobs workflow, I was very interested by, by, interested by the presentation that was done on workflow, but I, 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 I don't agree with the idea to not take in, into account the, what, what is configured into every, every job. Um, sadly, I, I think it's useful too. Uh, and infrastructure failures is an important part. We don't have currently a solution to detect uh, if something is uh, an environment failure, uh, CI failure, which has nothing to do with the developers, but to the, the operat operating people, and uh, 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 failure for development. That's, uh, that's a big issue for us. At the end, my conclusion was, uh, I, I love Jenkins, I recommend Jenkins. It's uh, easy to maintain, it scales uh, very easily uh, with, the need, with your needs. You can start from a, a, small, uh, a small beginning and increase time by time. Uh, the community and the plugins are, are great, uh, and so on. For Nuxeo, thanks to Jenkins, we can uh, give our customers a lot of guarantees. We can uh, save a lot of time for me. Uh, now, uh, making a release takes me one minute. I push a button, go home, sleep, and uh, the next day it's fine. <laughs> I don't have to stay uh, at work uh, during the night. Uh, or, and it, it helps us to maintain the, all our tens of APIs and frameworks and everything. And we have backward and forward compa compatibility. Uh, all that is thanks to the CI we could set up with Jenkins. Uh, 